And we do a little thing around here called Let's Talk in Class. Hi, everyone. Hi, Remar family. It's so good to see you. It's time to get in -clexing. I have some wonderful news. I have some, I have some wonderful news that is a sign of relief. Come on in, everybody. It's a sign of relief here. Uh, if you guys are familiar with me, welcome again. If this is your first time joining us, I am Regina Callion, the number one NCLEX instructor on this planet. And I am here at Remar Review, where we have the number one nursing students ever of all time. They're right here at Remar Review. So myself and the Remar team, we work so hard to make sure that you have what you need to pass your NCLEX exam. So I thank you guys for being here for our Let's Talk NCLEX segment. Every Friday, this is the best way to end your week if you are trying to get your nursing license because you have to stay in the mindset of, I gotta pass NCLEX, I have to pass NCLEX because it's the holiday season and I know that there are so many other things that are trying to occupy your mind during this Christmas season eggnog and dinners and family, but we have to keep our license as the priority. So we're going to do that today. Um, so for today, we have some amazing things to talk about. My favorite, NCLEX updates. I know you guys have seen it. I know you guys have heard about it because I um, have gotten so many emails about hey, the press release that uh, NCSBN put out. So I'm gonna be going over that today. Have no fear. Also, um, seven days of NCLEX. Oh yes, it's a really going down. It's a really happening. Seven days of NCLEX is upon us. And then also, as it is our custom, we will do some NCLEX questions, hot NCLEX topics that you guys will surely, surely want to review with myself today. So let's get in collection. Seven days, seven days begins December 26th, the day after Christmas. And we're gonna bring it into the New Year's as a family, this seven days of NCLEX. So no excuses, clear your calendars, use your time off from work, plan for uh, seven amazing days of studying and I've actually, um, I've actually, I know what we're going to be talking about, which for me is the most exciting part is that we have an agenda and we're going to follow it. Okay. So seven days of NCLEX only here at Remar Review, right here, Facebook Live. We're also going to do YouTube. So you have no excuses not to show up. This is a totally free seven days of NCLEX. Um, so congratulations. Congratulations, um, Nurse Elder passed today. Thank you for shouting her out. Sister, what a great sister you are to come on. Okay, so another thing that is happening, you get the free NCLEX review, but you also get $50 off of the DVD self-study package. You also get $50 off of the DVD self-study package. Thank you. Um, so again, this is the package. This is the world famous Remar Review package that I will be teaching from. I will be teaching from actually this entire seven days. So if you guys have purchased the package during Black Friday, you're going to love it because um, the advanced study sessions will be what you dreamed of in terms of the things that I'll be going over. So I am um, going to do some stuff from the five star quick facts. You guys know there's uh, good content in here. So I will be reviewing five star with you guys during seven days of NCLEX. Also, um, this is $50 off of this package. So you get the you get the homework book and practice exam as well in the package. And you get the
now? Just keep talking. Okay. So, I don't know if it was on or not. Um, we go thank you so much you guys for persisting with me you know how you know how the devil try to do when i get on here try to take me off this broadcast okay so i was talking about the package i was talking about um how during the seven days i will be giving you guys information right from the package so if you have been studying on your own you will see what an actual you will see what an actual um in-depth content review looks like because it is much different from just doing practice questions or flipping through the information on your own okay we're going to dig deep into the information so that you guys feel comfortable when you take your exam and again um fifty dollars off the rn and the pm package you have to sign up though because it's actually going to be a code that you will be able to put in and it will take that fifty dollars off so Sign up in the link so that you can get the schedule, the calendar, because I know everybody's asking me about times and things. Um, and so each time, each day will have a different time almost. So you want to make sure that you stay in the loop by signing up so that we can send you all the information. Again, I'm talking about the NCLEX review, December 26th to January 1st. And I'm really excited about it because we only do seven days once a year because it just takes so much preparation. But the response that we get from our students and the testimonials that come from it are amazing. How many people do we have signed up right now, Mark, for seven days of NCLEX? We have over 5,000 nursing students who will be joining us for seven days of NCLEX. 5,000, that is incredible. I'm looking forward to having the biggest class on Facebook ever, 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 ever. All right, so here we go, NCLEX update. You guys may have saw this. Shout out to Maureen who presented me with this document. Um, it was actually the press release about this topic. Also in the Remar Nurse Study Group, I saw a lot of comments on this, but essentially if you haven't seen it, what was shared was that the RN passing standard is going to be maintained at 0.00, .00 logic which means that which means that it's not getting easier or it's not getting more difficult they're going to keep the passing standard as it has been since 2016. so this is significant because what it means is that for the next three years the level of difficulty for the rn exam will be exactly the same now the reason why i think that this is happening and I think I think the reason why they're maintaining the passing standard is because they're they're planning to make some really big changes to the test as it is. And so because all of their focus is on the future changes, they're not going to mess with anything right now. Like they're not going to try to change the, the passing standard now and then have to educate all the instructors and all the schools and all the students on why they increase the level of difficulty or decreased it. I really think that they're just putting all of their focus into the new changes that they're trying to um, go in with the RN exam. And so now I'm anticipating those changes to pop up after 2022. Whew. So that is good news for most of you all watching because by then, surely you will have had your nursing license. But let me read you this statement. Um, because I will be talking a lot more about this during the seven days of NCLEX on New Year's Day. I will be going over NCLEX updates. But this is the statement that I found that I want to share with you guys. It says, NCSBN has embarked on a multi-year research project to explore new item types with potentially stronger capabilities for accurately evaluating students' clinical judgment skills before they receive their license to practice. It goes on to say, 
These new item types are currently included in an optional section of the existing NCLEX RN for the purpose of collecting functionality data. NCBSN has identified June 2019 as the deadline for a decision on whether to move forward on changes to the NCLEX RN. Hmm. So long story short, I was um, listening to, oh, one more thing. <laughs> the NCLEX PN is not currently included in the scope of these changes. Just in case you were wondering, my PNs out there, this really has nothing to do with you right now. However, wow, the upcoming test plan will include new item types as optional questions. No new items will be incorporated as scored questions in 2019. So again, long story short, um, when I was researching the NCLEX this week, I was listening to uh, I was listening to a talk about NCLEX, and essentially, one of the lead developers of the NCLEX exam said, and I'm paraphrasing, the NCLEX exam is the premier test in the whole nursing community. There is nothing like this NCLEX. It is, it is the truth, right? It's really good. But what they're finding is that the NCLEX exam is unable to accurately measure clinical judgment of candidates. He actually said that. He actually said that they're realizing that the exam, the way it's presented, the questions, the multiple choice, the fill in the blank, the audio in particular, the, the audio, the hotspot, these questions are not giving us an accurate measure of clinical judgment. And so he proposed that a, a radical change must be done to the NCLEX the way that we know it in order for it to simulate real clinical judgment in an actual um, real life hospital or inpatient care or nursing environment. And that just cannot be done with multiple choice or select all that apply questions. So they're embarking on a wonderful journey to try to come up with different ways to ask you guys the same content that we go over day after day after day after day. And they're really hoping that by doing this, that they get a better sense of who you are as an individual. Because you know what? Standardized tests are pretty biased and actually they really don't tell very much about who a person is or how great of a nurse they can be. And so it's a good thing and it's a bad thing in a sense that yes, we will be able to address some of the bias in these exams because uh, even from his own, own words, they're culturally biased, um, they're almost in a sense um, geographically biased. And so these kind of environments need to be addressed if we're going to talk about this will be the standard of testing. And so it's an exciting time for the, the whole stakeholders and people that are involved in NCLEX because these changes that they're talking about doing are very revolutionary for nursing education. But don't worry, guys. Remar Review is one step ahead of them <laughs> because I know the direction that they're trying to go in and we're going to be prepared for it here. But in the meantime, for us who are facing the NCLEX of the current times, we have to understand that there are certain things that will help you to do better on this standardized test. And then there are certain things that will just cause you to be really frustrated with the studying process. So with all that said, um, in the words, in the words of Latasha Mitchell, thank God I was worrying and stressing out about them changing the format before I passed. Well, you don't have to worry about that because uh, we won't see any format changes until 2022. But you guys will, who are testing, you guys will be exposed to the questions, um, the research questions 
and you will be able to see the direction that the NCLEX exam is going in. And actually some of you guys who have already taken the NCLEX exam know exactly what I mean when I said the research questions, because at the end of your, your test, you have an option to try to answer some of the questions that they're testing out in the new format. You have, a, you have the option to answer the radio questions or the closed house questions. And so that's why, where's it at? That's why in the, mm, in the NCLEX Ready question book that I wrote um, and released during Black Friday, I tried to put in some of the things that you guys will be expected to know. Also, um, in Quick Facts, if you guys have five star Quick Facts in the back of the new book, I also did some of those kind of questions that you were seeing where you have to, um, this is not the best, but where you have to interpret like doctor's orders and charts and progressions. Um, because one of the things that they will do is they will begin to give you clinical scenarios and then uh, give you timelines of a patient. And based off of the events that happen like eight hours after surgery or 16 hours after surgery, you're gonna have to know what changes are expected and what changes are indicating that uh, your patient your patient is in uh, trouble. And that's a good way to measure whether if you have good clinical judgment or not. So all of that is to bring you the latest and the greatest up to the minute information on the NCLEX exam. This is what we do right here, Remar. We just like to talk about NCLEX. So if you're interested in it at all, this is the place for you. All right. So um, congratulations. We have another person in the past. Congratulations, nurse O'Malley. O'Malley, congratulations. I am super excited, but you got to tell me what did you, what are you? Are you a RN? Are you a PN? Tell us how you did it. One of the things about Read My Review is we have amazing testimonials from you guys who get on here and you'll say, hey, Regina, I passed. But you'll also send us a video and we're able um, to use your video to encourage and motivate somebody else who may be in your position ready to pass NCLEX too. How many of you guys want to start up the new years with your license? Yes, your nursing license. So many of our Remar nurses are in that situation um, and it's amazingly amazing. All right, so here is, oh, let's get, let's get NCLEX in. Here is our question. Oh yes, here is our question from Instagram. Are you guys, are you guys ready? Are you guys ready for it? Here it is. Bam. <laughs> Identify the potential side effect of enalapril. And you guys know enalapril maliate. Come on, what kind of medication is this? And what has it done to our patient here? What has it done to our friend? Is this number one, angioedema, two thirds spacing, three, oedema, oedema, oh yes. Or four, macular edema. Mmm, this is a good one. Oh, this is basic nursing process information. You gotta know it if you wanna pass your exam. And not only do you need to know uh, what this is, but tell me, why does it happen? Why does it happen? What is it? I see the answers coming in. Here we go. Here we go. The correct answer. All right. Shout out. There's over 250 Remar nurses here on this Let's Talk NCLEX. Here we go. The correct answer is, of course, this is angioedema. And this is one of the worst angioedemas I have seen. However, remember, now, when you look at this patient, he has definitely had an ACE inhibitor. And African-Americans are more predisposed to angioedema with ACE inhibitors. So it's common, happened to my grandma. Um, you see it a lot in the African-American community. However, here's a next step NCLEX question. If this patient, as you see him here, just has localized swelling, Will they need an artificial airway? What do you guys think? Does our patient right here need an artificial airway? 
Mm, it's localized just to his mouth. What would you say? Yes, I see the answers. I mean, this is nursing intervention. Would you prepare the patient to get an artificial airway? Okay, let me tell you guys. If this client just has the swelling in the mouth area, in the lips right now, there is no need for an artificial airway to be placed, okay? There is no need yet, okay? So I see you guys, not yet. It's just localized. But of course, if there's some um, laryngeal swelling, this patient is all right, all right? So for the sake of, for the sake of NCLEX, if they say the swelling is just localized to the lips, do not, do not try to, um, Ooh, do not try to prepare your patient for any artificial airways. And artificial airways is down the throat to be placed, all right? So just remember that as a safety point. Just remember that as a safety point, okay? I tell you guys stuff for a reason. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, I like that question. They, um, why give it to African Americans in general? That's a great question. Um, I was, yeah, it says, why would you even give this to African Americans? And it, it really is just a matter of um, actually the healthcare provider preference, but also sometimes when it comes to medications, um, they say the the risks and the benefits outweigh the risks. That's what I want to say. Sometimes the benefits of proper blood pressure control, reducing the patient um, from having a stroke, are um, more more imperative than swelling of the lips or swelling of the mouth. So that is why ACE inhibitors are still prescribed to African Americans because it is um it is a side effect that is expected or could possibly be expected, but it, it's not the case for everybody. It's not the case for everybody. Okay, so that is that. All right. Here's another question, and this is our Facebook question. This is our Facebook question for this week and it is a nurse manager realizes that she is having work-related challenges with some of the newly assigned nurses the best way for her to approach this situation is which is it all right is it going to be number one seek advice from the director of nursing two Apologize to the staff who are unhappy with their assignments. Three, hold a staff meeting to address the unit concerns. Or four, identify the source of the conflict and meet with the affected staff. One, two, three, or four. What do you guys say? So essentially a nurse manager, um, she is noticing she is noticing that some nurses are um, there. They're having difficulty. They're they're having some challenges. So, what is the best way for her to approach this situation? And it's very imperative for us to understand that even though we're new nurses who don't have experience, NCLEX will ask us questions about other disciplines so that we can demonstrate that we understand scope of practice. So they will ask us, even if you're taking the RN exam, you will be asked about what the licensed practical nurse can do, what the um, unlicensed personnel can do, what the nurse manager can do, who is involved in the interdisciplinary team. Like you have to understand the principles of the other disciplines that you work with. So here we're talking about the nurse manager and how to handle conflict, how to handle difficulties amongst the staff. It's very likely that some of you all as new nurses will be promoted to a nurse manager position very quickly. Um, even, in, even in my hospital where I worked, after six months as a new nurse, I was already um, doing charge duties. So you need to know. So the correct answer out of all of these choices is going to be, that's right, number four, the nurse manager needs to identify the source of the conflict and meet with only the affected staff. Only the affected staff at this time. Um, there is assessment that needs to be done, identifying the conflict, right? 
but also you need to address the individuals. So even though some of you, let me show you, even though some of you may have picked three, hold a staff meeting to address the unit concerns, hold a staff meeting to address the unit concerns. The NCLEX question gave us some very valuable information that we shouldn't overlook. And it says that the challenges with some of the newly assigned nurses. So this is not a unit wide problem. This isn't something that you would call everybody in for and say, this is an issue with the unit because it's not an issue with the unit. It's an issue with individuals. And when a nurse manager um, has an issue with an individual, then they must resolve it with that individual first and not bring other people into the situation. So I hope you guys understand the rationale for that. I really hope you guys understand that because it, it, it is a matter of um, healthy, healthy employee interactions and how to resolve conflicts in general. Because even as nurses, um, we will definitely be in situations where there's a potential for us to have conflict with our own co-workers or people who we have to delegate. When I was a new nurse, man, I had the toughest times telling the nurse's aides to do things because here I was 20 something years old and I was I was working with nurse's aides who were in their 50s who had been being a nurse's aide longer than I was born. And here I have to come in and tell them, please go make so-and-so's bed or please go get um, you know, Mr. Smith some water. And they're looking at me like, you don't, you don't tell me what to do. I've been here since before you was born. You don't have to tell me what to do. And so that was the attitude that I got. But actually, I had to assert myself and say, uh, actually, I do have to tell you what to do because that's what I've been trained to do. And that's the expectation of the patients here that I, with my education, would tell you without your education what to do. So uh, moving on. It's important for us to know how to handle conflict in the workplace environment, right? Okay, next question. Next question is, same thing, um, a nurse manager, and I really like this question. I, I think this is like maybe the second or third time that I did this question, but I, I just had to do it again today. All right, here we go. Um, a nurse manager has received a formal complaint about a nurse who is physically abusing elderly clients on the unit. The priority action for the administration is to do which of the following, which of the following? Should that nurse manager notify the local authorities? Two, notify the appropriate board of nursing? Three, notify and file a complaint with the hospital's legal team, or four, write an incident report including physical evidence gathered in the client's chart. Oh, there's 400 Remar nurses and 400 different answers on this question. Now let's look at the scenario, you guys. You have a nurse manager and she receives a formal complaint about a nurse who is physically abusing elderly clients on the unit. I see some question marks. They're like, uh, four. So everybody's answering different things. Um, and that's understandable, but this is a matter of understanding proper protocol in the nursing, in the nursing world. Okay. So let's clear it up. Let's clear it up. And it's all right. The correct answer actually for everyone, everyone's learning, everyone's learning is going to be yes. Number one, it is so important if, okay, so let me just start with this. There are things that you as a nurse have to report. It is mandatory that you report it when you have gathered evidence that this thing is happening. So like child abuse, elderly abuse, these are things that you definitely want to report. Um, even dog dog bites. I mean, there are just some things that you as a nurse need to report. All right. So the correct answer is actually notifying the local authorities because this is the priority action. This is the priority action because the, the nurse manager has received a formal complaint. It was a formal complaint. 
So um, that is reason enough to come in and have the authorities um, investigate, investigate. That's the priority action. Now, the second action, if there was, if there was um, some there, would be to notify and file a complaint with the hospital's legal team. So you want to look at the choices that you're given, and you want to pick, and you want to pick the best answer from the choices that you're given. Okay, so um, notify the local authorities is a choice. Uh, notify the appropriate board of nursing. Is this a matter that you would call the board of nursing? Or no, absolutely not. They're not going to be. They're not going to take the complaint because they're going to tell you to call who. If you say there's been a complaint about someone who's physically abusing the elderly, the board of nursing is going to tell that you notify the authorities. Okay, so that's number two. That's the reason why number two doesn't work. Number three, notify and file a complaint with the hospital's legal team. Yes, that absolutely has to be done. That has to be done because, of course, the patient might sue. The, I'm sorry, the nurse might sue in this instance. Um, the nurse might, you know, have to have discussions with the hospital's legal team. So you want to make sure, you want to make sure that they understand what's happening as the nurse manager. Um, and then, so it says here, write an incident report, including physical evidence gathered in the client's chart. So no, we are not going to do that. We do not write incident reports and put them in the client's chart. That is not gonna be appropriate for the nurse to do. So really, when you're taking this exam, it is so easy, it's so easy to say, well, it should have been this, or I wish it was this, but you have to look at the choices that you're given and learn how to pick the best one because the scenarios, the scenarios on NCLEX are not always going to be cut and dry. They're going to be, um, they're going to require critical thinking. That the goal is that you're put into a new situation, right? Remember how I talked about NCLEX is trying to, um, is trying to evaluate your clinical judgment. So the best way to do that is to put you in a situation that you may have never been in before and see how you respond, see what you're going to pick. And that's how right now they're trying to evaluate your clinical judgment. So you have to, you have to think about it in the terms of, okay, what's the best way? What's the priority step? All right. So number one, the notify the local authorities is going to be the best action. Okay. The best action there for the nurse manager to take okay and in this situation the nurse manager is the one who is respect who is expected to do something right the nurse manager is the highest in the in the NCLEX it's like the nurse manager is the one who takes action on these kind of unit or um yeah they take action based on what's happening on their unit all right. All right. So let me just read this to you as well. All right. So the nurse manager should notify the authorities as elder and child abuse are reportable events. All right. There are reportable events. A complaint should also be filed with the hospital's legal team in case either client or nurse should want to sue. There is no need to record the opinions of others, only factual statements. Also, um, do not place incident reports in the client's medical records. Do not place incident report in the client's medical records, okay? So, and, and then for you guys that are asking, when it, comes to, when it comes to nurse manager, nurse manager is considered administration. They are not considered staff positions. So some of you guys may have not understood that, um, when looking at the question, what is the priority action for the administration to do, for the administration to do? So anyone in a management position qualifies as administration, okay? So I hope that helps somebody. All right, um, let's go on. Let's go on because we have more NCLEX questions to talk about. And there, the, the numbers are just climbing. So I also do this segment when um, 
I'm on Let's Talk NCLEX and it's called Ask Remar. And some of you guys send me questions throughout the week that I respond to via email, but I also like to bring them on the broadcast too. So I have an Ask Remar for you guys. Um, hey, miss, this is just what it says. Hey, miss, can you tell me if it's necessarily to use a mask for neutropenia patients? And I put this on here because I have a lot of nurses who are international and English is not their first language, but they're studying and they message me. So I appreciate you guys. Um, when you message me, I don't care what the English is like. I will figure it out and I will answer your question. All right. So um, is it necessary to use a mask for clients who have neutropenia? And neutropenia, of course, your patient is immunocompromised at this point so what would you guys think the answer would be yes it is necessary but it is necessary for the client and not for the nurse so as long as you guys understand that when your patient is on neutropenic precautions they're in isolation from you the nurse right they're they're um they're they need to be protected from the hospital staff because we have all kinds of germs on us. Like if you're in a hospital, you more than likely have MRSA living on your body. So our patients need to be protected from healthcare professionals. So that's why you do wear a mask, you wear a glove, you wear a gown. These are things that you put on. If you have um, the Quick Facts book, I go over that. Yes, I know you did. If you have the Quick Facts book, you go, I go over that because it is a safety point. And NCLEX is about keeping our patients safe. That is the whole idea of the exam. Yes, reverse isolation. Absolutely. Okay, so I have here questions about this. Seven days of NCLEX. I have to go back over it again because you guys are asking me about this, which is the workbook for seven days of NCLEX. I finally finished it. It is a whopping 34 pages of wonderfulness Oh my goodness. It's a 34 pages of wonderfulness um, that will be yours. Seven days of NCLEX. And if you guys have signed up, is the link, um, the link is on the website. If you go to Remar Nurse, if you go to remarnurse.com, you will be able to sign up for um, seven days of NCLEX and you will be able to get your schedule. Now, I wanted to go over the workbook to let you guys know that on certain days we will be doing amazing NCLEX topics, okay? So the workbook is finished and it is scheduled to go out. It's scheduled to be out by December the 15th, which is tomorrow, but we're working really hard to get it um, for you guys even sooner than tomorrow because I turned it in today, it's done. So day one, we'll be going over a practice exam. So. And I know I usually don't start with questions, but I'm starting with questions because I want you guys to see where you are. Some of you are testing um, the first week of January or you're, you're testing right after or right during seven days. So the practice questions in the beginning, when you, when you get your workbook, do the practice questions, just do them. Um, there, of course, I start off with case studies because um, that's just my thing right now. I love case studies. So the first, couple pages are um, questions that you're going to do. And this is day one. We're going to go over it. Day one, seven days of NCLEX, right? Day two, hot topics for NCLEX. So I already have written out most of the notes for you guys. So you'll just be filling in what the hot topic is. Oh, this light is terrible. You'll be finishing. You'll just be <laughs> filling in what the hot topic is. And you will also be um, just taking notes. But I did most of the notes for you guys. So day two of seven days of NCLEX is hot topics, hot topics. And I'm going over things in the package. So if you don't have the package, this is a great time to get the package with the $50 discount code. All right. Day three of seven days of NCLEX, we are going to be doing our pharmacology review. And this will be an advanced study session. So literally, when I say advanced study session, my idea is that when you come to this review, you already know medications. Like I'm not going over what any medications do. I'm not doing it. 
what I'm doing um, is just telling you how the medications are going to interact with each other that would be safe or not safe for the NCLEX exam. And it's a good question. If you're doing the practice test, don't use your notes. If you're doing the practice test, try to do them without your notes because then you'll see um, exactly where you are. And I, the first question, <laughs> the first question is about interdisciplinary teams. All right, it's about interdisciplinary teams. So what do you know about that? The, sex, the second question is about collapsed lung. All right, the third question is about chest tubes. So these are very foundational nursing uh, process things, and you, you, you will all, you will have um, the opportunity to just demonstrate if you know it or if you don't. I'm going to go over it day one, so you can uh, look you can look forward to those answers being given to you right away. All right. So the code sign up. You have to sign up to get the link to get the workbook to get the code. All right. Now. Um, Oh, day three. So day three is heavy pharmacology. That's all I'm doing. I have pharmacology and then I have a case study about Mary Jane. Okay. Mary Jane and her pharmacology. So we'll actually go over a set of doctor's orders and we will talk about what they're for and how um, they will help the patient. I hope you guys are signing up and you'll be there. All right. Because I don't want to be there by myself doing this. I put in, I put in a lot of work to this NCLEX review. All right, day four, our focus notes um, to, no, this this is totally free. If you sign up for the link, this is totally free. This will come to your email, all right? Um, day four, we're gonna do two days of an NCLEX review. The review will probably be about two hours to two and a half hours, honestly. Um, so just be prepared to block off that time. We're gonna go over psychology. We're gonna go over psychology, okay? Because I get a ton of requests. Hey, Regina, can you please go over psychiatric con um, concepts? Oh, the code isn't out yet because you won't be able to use the code until December 26th. So we don't want you guys trying to put in the code right now because it wouldn't work. So we're, we're gonna send out the code via the email. Okay, so we're going over psych. We're going over psychiatric issues. And yes, I will be talking about um, schizophrenia. I will be talking about um, this, this, the early, the middle, the late stages of Alzheimer's, what you need to know for that, for NCLEX, um, treatment for these things. So that will be day one, okay? Day two, I'm going over, this is the P's, <laughs> the P's of NCLEX, because day two, I'm going over pediatric, con con, um, pediatric content, and I'm also going to go over pregnancy and the diagnostic procedures regarding regarding that. So I didn't want you to miss out on that. It's going to be some good stuff. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Also, also, um, I am. Oh, and then there's homework. Now, it's up to you if you want to do the homework when you first get this. You can. Um, but it might be good for you to wait until after we do the NCLEX review to try to do the homework because day six is homework and then day seven is our NCLEX open house where I'm going to be doing quizzes from the products, from the quick facts book, questions from the question bank book. Oh, it's going to be great. But I'm telling you guys, you're ready to print this out. I couldn't even staple my paper. I had to use a clip because that's how many pages it was. So this will be coming out to you guys. I'm really happy and I'm really excited. Um, for the seven days of NCLEX workbook, please, please, please sign up. It won't take but a second and you'll be able to get the workbook, the discount code. Also, I'm sending out resource pages, how to study for select all that apply questions, how to answer select all that apply questions, um, some quizzes some things like that that will come to your email right from me. And before you know it, seven days of NCLEX will be here. So I really want you guys to enjoy the holiday. I really want you guys to enjoy the holiday. The times for seven days of NCLEX vary. So December 26th, there's a time, December 27th, December 28th. So sign up to get the schedule because every day is different and I just, I don't know them off the top of my head. And so I don't want to, um, I don't want to, <laughs> uh, I don't want to tell you guys any wrong information. I believe I do. Actually, I, I am. I see that topic you said, um, 
I am. I am going to be talking about telehealth, actually. I know what you guys need. I know what you guys need. You need that information on telehealth nursing. I have it. There is actually one of the homework questions is about telehealth nursing. So I'm going to be going over that. This is not to be missed. But also, if you want questions about telehealth, um, interdisciplinary team, bam, is right here in the quick facts, in, not the quick facts, the NCLAX ready question bank book. I wrote, I wrote, I wrote it in here. All right. So check that book out. You can get that book today um, if you want. But yeah, this is going to be amazing. Sign up. Also, I won't keep you guys any longer. I know it's Friday. You're like, Regina, it's Friday. I got y'all. Um, email me if you have any questions. Support at RemarReview.com. Happy, happy holidays to you, Alexander, too, as well. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to do, listen, Vanessa, I have you. When I say I have you, I have you. I'm going to talk about the major psychiatric issues on the NCLEX exam. So bipolar disorder will be included. And I appreciate you being on here today with me, Vanessa. I appreciate you guys. All right. I collected the topics. Support at RemarReview.com. Yes, very great, very excellent question. If you have your student workbook, because you have the package, you still need to print out this book. You still need to print out this book because I won't be going directly from the workbook. I want you guys to keep your workbook for the DVDs. And so I will be going specifically from here. And so you will, you will you'll definitely want the hot topics uh, in the homework because it's not in the DVD package. Okay. So that's a great question. Um, after day, when should we take in class? I am not sure, Velma, you need to message me. You need to message me. All right. So yes, you still have to print out. This is required to attend class. Consider this a mandatory document that you have. Be ready. I really want you guys to enjoy your Christmas holiday with your families if you celebrate it. Um, but this is just a wonderful time of the year. So enjoy it, enjoy it, enjoy it. But understand that the day after Christmas, your presence is required right here at Remar Review because Mark and I will be waiting for you guys. And let me just say this. You guys requested Mark to come up and pray on Monday. And I said, not Monday, but Friday. So today is Friday. So we're going to have the chaplain of Remar Nurse come up here and offer us a word of prayer and i know we all we all need prayer and i know there may be specific prayer requests right now but we're going to take some time out for prayer and mark is going to come up um so i know you guys have many many prayer requests coming up mark and i are actually we need prayer because we're preparing to move and we're trying to move into our our home and mark is in charge of a lot of renovations in the home. And so me and the children are waiting to have those renovations done so we can enjoy Christmas in our home. So pray for pray for the elder, please, that he gets everything renovated so we can get into our home for Christmas. All right, without further ado, Mark Callion That's me. is here um, to offer up a word of prayer and encourage these nursing students because they're testing very soon and they're um they're excited for seven days of NCLEX. i'm excited too me too yeah i'm excited too and um thank you for the introduction oh yeah uh, <laughs> and i gave them some background information a little background on us all right and you know this is this guy who's um he was on the radio for a long time named paul harvey uh, he tells you some information uh, and then he says now here's the rest of the story uh, and so the rest of the story uh, is that, yes, we, there's a lot of renovation and things of that to do. Um, but this is also on the tail end of the Black Friday and the preparation for the seven days of NCLEX it's and true. Uh, and also the holiday season as as a whole. So don't pray for the renovations like don't. That's cool. That'll that'll happen. Uh, just pray for the stress um, yes. so that we're not at each other and stressing, yes. and you know, worried about that, that. We're not worried about anything, true. you know. Um, so that's that's really the prayer that we want to pray. So oftentimes it's not praying about the test, but it's about the process leading to the test that you're able to uh, take the right steps, that you're able to do it uh, with uh, without fear, that you're operating in faith and that you're moving uh, with purpose in everything that you do. So it, it's not the renovations, guys. It, it's just that we make sure that we are uh, deliberate in our actions and we do what we need to do and that we love each other in the process. So this is one of the most beautiful, wonderful times of the year. 
yeah. uh, as the song says, but it can also be one of the most stressful times of the year. Um, oftentimes with the holidays, it's kind of like a, a milestone and it reminds you of where you've been. Uh, so what were we doing this time last year or who was with us this time last year that was not with us or what was our situation like and how has it changed or are we in the same place that we were uh, this time last year? And it, it just reminds you of all of these things and family dynamics that come about and oh, I have to get the gifts and the bills and everything that can come up. Uh, and then also not to mention, you don't get as much sunshine here in in the northeast as well so well, they're, they're they're saying it's a new home can you tell them about the home you tell them about the home the home is not a new home <laughs> well it, it, listen it's new to us right it's new to us yeah well, actually but no not it's even not new even to new to us no man listen all right so all right my brother and i we we do a little bit of real estate right uh so we fix up houses and things like that mm -hmm. uh, when he got married that slowed down when i met regina and got married that slowed down uh, it's amazing that when I was first working on the homes, actually, I, I introduced Regina and said, or invited her to the house and said, hey, look what we're doing. Look what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And she was like, stop working and come talk to me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I just wanted to show you and brag a little bit. But like I had to prioritize the relationship. Mm -hmm. So the house has literally sat uh, until this point in time mm -hmm. where we actually need to move into it as a family. And God has preserved it. Um, yes. as well. So, so thank long. God for, for years, for, for like, years yeah, since of we, since we actually met, I've been working on this house, but then I stopped with the kids and the family and everything, mm -hmm. put that aside in order to prioritize business. And now we're able to come back to it. So thank God for yes. his preservation oh my goodness. during this time. Yes. And now that we need to move into it, it's there and it's good. And we have a partnership mm -hmm. and everything else is fine. So, yeah. uh, God will take care of everything that needs to be taken care of. Absolutely. Put relationships first, first relationship with him. In your relationship with those in your circle uh, and those uh, that are need to be added to the kingdom so with that i'm going to pray that uh, throughout this holiday season throughout this time of year whether you celebrate or not um that you're able to effectively manage and deal with the stress that can become that can come about it uh, and that you're able to have joy even in the process we see that you guys are testing soon yeah uh, you're requesting a specific personal prayer mm -hmm. um, we thank god for that um and, and we're praying for you on a regular basis we want to make sure that we're praying for the important things, the most important things, yeah. and then everything else that you need, God will take care of that. You have to trust that God will take care of everything that you need, Absolutely. including this test, including your license, including the provision for your home and your family and your relationships. Everything is everything will supply all of our needs if our relationship with him is secure. So let's pray. Okay. All right. Lord, thank you once again just for the reminder of who you are. Um, thank you, Lord, for loving us in the way that you do. Thank you for providing that sense of assurance that um, that you are our creator and that uh, with you, Lord, there's nothing that is impossible. So we place everything in your hands. Uh, if it's all possible with you, Lord, why wouldn't we try? We want to be able to just turn these things over to you, Lord. Turn over doubt to you. Turn over insecurities to you, Lord. Uh, and in exchange for turning those things over, I ask that you would give us your joy. I ask that you would give us your peace. I ask that you would give us your presence. And thank you, Lord, for giving us your love. And thank you for giving us your son. Now, help us to be able to take those many gifts that you have given us and be able to, in turn, share that love with somebody else uh, so that we are uh, not just selfish in our request, but that we are generous and, uh, um, and gracious in our giving uh, to others as well. Help us as a Remar Nurse community to grow, uh, to grow in faithfulness, to grow in knowledge, to grow in uh, favor with man. Uh, as Lord asked, as, these, as the nurses, as they pass their test, also ask that you would give them favor upon the workplace so that they would find the right working environment for the that will provide for their family, that will provide for their mental and their spiritual needs and their well-being. Uh, and Lord, I also ask that you would close some doors that need to be closed and open the doors that need to be opened so that we can walk through in faith, trusting you all the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amen. guys. Amen. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. We pray. I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to seven days yes. of NCLEX coming up. I'm looking forward to more testimonies and mm -hmm. just you guys continuing to be blessed. Like you don't know how blessed you truly, truly are. Um, you have so much to be thankful for, as do we, as do we. So it's just wonderful. Um, and I'm just I'm just so, so excited for you all who will be testing soon and studying together as a Remark community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for keeping us in prayer and uh, encouraging one another and staying uplifted absolutely and oh we my will goodness see you yeah but we got to do before we before we go we can uh -huh. we, we will, will we must 
past gosh, NCLEX. Man. Absolutely no doubt, no questions asked. These are all final statements. We can, we will, or we must pass NCLEX. Have a great weekend, guys. God Bye. Bye-bye.